Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will see what is Q data structure, what are the applications of Q data structure, and how to implement Q data structure using array implementation. Or we can say what is the static implementation of Q data structure. Q is a linear data structure in which elements are inserted from one end and deleted from another end. That is, Q data structure follows FIFO property. First in, first out. The end from where elements are inserted is called rear end, and the end from where elements are deleted is called front end. The process of adding an element into Q is called NQ operation, and the process of deleting an element from the Q is called DQ operation. Q is a very important data structure because it has various real life applications. The first application is you might have seen on various ticket counters that please pay in queue or please make a queue. That is the same queue which we are studying here. Another example is in printers. For example, there are various users who are using the same printer to print. We can arrange their request in a queue data structure so that printer serves the request in a first come first serve basis. Another example is in CPU scheduling algorithm. CPU is also a shared resource uh, like in previous example we have seen the printer. So here also we can use Q data structure to implement first come first serve property. There are also another algorithms in CPU scheduling but this is uh, one of them. Another example of Q data structure is in call center phone system. Suppose there are various users calling the call center representative or service representative so to put them on hold in an order in, which, in the order in which they call the representative we can use Q data structure until any service provider service representative is free to explain how Q data structure is implemented I want to tell you a story about a pigeon let's have a look this is story of a man and his very obedient pigeon. The name of man was Reed and the name of pigeon was Frankie. To check how much Frankie is obedient, Reed decided to play a game with his pigeon Frankie. Reed is having some food for Frankie. Reed moves one step forward and put food for Frankie at first location. Frankie also moves one step forward but didn't eat the food. Reed again moves one step forward and put food for Frankie at next location. But this time Frankie didn't move forward and keeps looking to the food present at first location. Now Reed keeps moving and put food for Frankie until Reed reaches to the last location. But Frankie didn't move forward and keeps looking to the food present at first location. Note a point that Reed cannot put food after last location. Reed noticed that Frankie didn't eat until he is asked to eat. Now when Reed asked Frankie to eat by saying, Frankie eat, then Frankie eats the food at its current location and moves to the next location. Similarly when Reed asked Frankie to eat, only then Frankie eats and moves to the next location. This proves that Frankie is very obedient pigeon. When Frankie eats the food at last location, then both Reed and his pigeon Frankie moves to the initial position from where the game started. Let's play the game once again to see some more important points. When the Reed puts food at first location, then Reed and Frankie both moves to the first location. After that, from next location only Reed moves, but Frankie stays at the first location. Another important point to be noticed is that whenever Reed asks Frankie to eat, then it eats in a first come first serve fashion. I mean Frankie doesn't skip food at any location. Next point is when Reed and Frankie are at same location, then this location is the only location where food is actually present. And after eating food at this location, Frankie and Reed both moves to the position from where the game started. And now if Reed asks Frankie again to eat, obviously it is not possible because there is nothing to eat. 
according to the queue here read is working as rear variable and frank is working as front variable next we will see that how this example can be used to understand implementation of simple queue i hope you have got some idea from the story of read and his obedient pigeon frankie where read was working as rear variable and frankie was working as front variable now we will see how to implement simple queue with an example and we will see the array implementation of simple queue here we are given an example apply we have to apply following operations on an empty simple queue of size 4 here 4 is also we are named this 4 as max this is the maximum size of the queue we have to apply these operations we have to insert some elements and we have to delete some then delete some element then again insertion and deletion like this we will see this one by one so initially the simple queue is empty we have given an empty simple queue so we have drawn an empty simple queue of size 4 because index starts from 0 so we have started from 0 1 2 and 3 this is the index we have to initialize the rear and front variable rear and front variable both will be at minus 1 ok so we have to do the first insertion we have to insert 20 so to insert 20 rear will move one step forward and insert 20 at this first location or index 0 so what is the new value of real variable real plus plus we have incremented the value of real that is from minus 1 to 0 so now the value of real is 0 but this is the first insertion before this insertion q was empty this is the first insertion which is a special case we have to handle this special case in the code or the algorithm of insertion on simple queue separately. In this case, both rear and front will move to the first situation. So here, rear is also at index 0 and front is also at index 0. We have completed one insert, one operation. Next operation is insert 30. Before this insertion, we have already one element in the queue so this is not the first insertion case in this normally here will move to the next location and insert 20 insert 30 rear was at index 0 now rear will move one step forward and in then insert 30 at its current location but front will stay to the first element which was inserted so we have completed next operation also next we have to see this operation which is insert 40 to insert 40 again normally here will move one step forward because this is not the first insertion before this insertion there was already some elements in the queue this is not the first insertion so normally rear will move rear plus plus rear was at index 1 now rear is at index 2 and we will insert 40 at index 2 where rear is so this operation is also completed next we have to delete an element to delete an element front will move make a point that during insertion rear will move and during deletion front will move so here we have to, we have done front plus plus front will move from index 0 to 1 which element is deleted 20 is deleted so we have noted it here ok please make a point that Deletion, insertion, deletion both will be done according to the FIFO property. First in first out. 20 was the first element which was inserted. 20 is the first element which is deleted. Who, who inserted 
the, who are inserting the elements rear is inserting the elements who is deleting the elements front is deleting the elements so this deletion operation is completed next we have to delete one more element so in this front will again move one step forward front is at index 1 now front will move to index 2 which element is deleted 30 is deleted so this operation is also completed next we have to insert 50 you know that during insertion rear will move so rear will move one step forward rear plus plus from index 2 to index 3 in this operation so rear will come to index 3 and we will insert the element at index where rear is we will index we insert 50 here at index 3 so this operation is also completed next we have to insert 60 you know that during insertion rear I have to move but we cannot move rear to one step forward because rear is already at last location so we will say that we cannot apply this operation insert 60 we cannot apply this operation 6 insert 60 because we cannot insert or we can say there is overflow situation how we have checked this overflow situation if before this insertion here is at max minus 1 note that max is 4 4 minus 1 is 3 yes rear is at third index that means it is at the last index rear cannot move one step forward so this is the overflow situation next we have to delete one element delete one element from this element okay who deletes the element? Front deletes the element. Front will move one step forward. Front will move from index 2 to index 3. Which element will be deleted? 40 will be deleted. Front moves from index 2 to index 3. Which element is deleted? 40 is deleted. Okay. Yes, this operation is successful. 40 is deleted. Next operation is very important. We have to delete one more element. Why it is important? Because before this deletion, front and rear both are at same index, which, which means that the element at this index, which is 50, is the only element left in the queue. And after this deletion, after the deletion of 50, the queue will be empty. So we will reset the value of f and r to the minus 1. After this deletion, which element is deleted? 50 is deleted. 50 is deleted, we have noted down it here and after this delete, after this deletion front and rear will be reset to the minus 1 please have a look that it is the same state from where the game started initially q was empty and front and rear was at minus 1 now q is empty and front and rear is at minus 1 but how to check that this element deletion is the last element deletion? If before this deletion front and rear are at same index, that this means this. This means that this element is the last element deletion. If front and rear was at my was at same index. Now if we try to delete one more element from this Q, but there is nothing to delete. So we will say that we cannot delete an element or we will say underflow situation and how we have checked this underflow situation if front is at minus 1 or we can check rear is at minus 1 because if front is at minus 1 rear will also be at minus 1 we can check any one so we have checked here if front is at minus 1 yes previously front is at minus 1 there is nothing that means that the queue is empty We have seen the implementation of simple queue with an example. Now we will see the implementation of simple queue with a C function. First we will see the insertion operation, then we will see the deletion operation. So first we will see the insertion operation. We have created a C function insert queue. What are the parameters required to this function? We need the queue, 
विच इज एन एरे फ्रंट वेरिएबल रियर वेरिएबल मैक्सिमम साइज ऑफ क्यू एंड द आइटम टू बी इंसर्टेड फर्स्ट वी विल चेक वेदर वी कैन इंसर्ट और नॉट इफ रियर इज एट लास्ट इंडेक्स दैट मीन्स वी कैन नॉट इंसर्ट दिस इज द ओवरफ्लो सिचुएशन एल्स वी कैन इंसर्ट but in here also we will check some special cases what is was the special case during insertion first insertion is the special case if before insertion rear is at minus 1 which means this means that the element we are going to insert is the first insertion so during first insertion both rear and front moves so rear is and front both will come to index 0 from my index minus 1 to index 0 and and at that location we will insert our element else part means this is not the first insertion we will just move the rear variable and insert the element at index where rear is pointing so we have completed the insertion operation next we will see the deletion operation on simple queue the parameters required is required are queue Front variable, rear variable, max variable, maximum size of queue. We don't need uh, the element to be deleted because the element will be deleted according to the FIFO property. We have created a variable named element to store the element which will be deleted. First, we will check whether we can delete or not. That is the empty situation. If front and rear both are at minus one, we can only check the front. That this this means that the queue is empty if front is at minus one. Else we can delete. There is at least one element, and which element will be deleted? The element at index where front is pointing. So we will store that element in the variable named as element, so that we can either print or return at last. Now we will check the special cases. What was the special case during the deletion operation? Last element deletion is the special case. If front and rear both are pointing to the same index, both are storing the value of the same index, that this may, means that this element is the last element deletion case. And during after last element deletion, front and rear both will be reset to minus one. Uh, else, normal deletion. During normal deletion, only front will move. Front plus plus. After this deletion operation, we will return the element which is deleted. So we will return element. I hope you have got the idea of simple queue using array. Let me summarize what we have seen from starting. We have gone through what is the simple queue, what are the applications of simple queue, what is the importance of simple queue to real life examples. Then we have seen the story of Reed and his pigeon Frankie. after that we have seen the example of simple queue using array and finally we have seen the c implementation of simple queue thank you